All right, praise God. So now we are up and ready to um, get tonight's uh, lesson up and running. And tonight's lesson dealing with the church. I know we've been through a lot learning about the gifts, the shared gifts, and then I wanted to emphasize the five-fold ministry. But tonight we're going to be dealing with a lesson entitled, What's Up Church? And this particular lesson is very unique because it's going to give us a very thorough understanding how the church began, where it was then, where it is now, and the role it plays to today. But guess what? The only way the church works if you are a part of it. Why do you think the letter U is found in the middle of the word church? Did anybody notice that? Or just maybe I'm looking or being nosy too much. Yeah, when you look at the letter or the word church, the letter U is there, meaning you are the church. Amen. Isn't that something? You got C-H, you are, then another C-H. So when we look at the church, you are the church. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Now, although a lot of us are familiar with another church, and I'm not going to be meddling with y'all tonight because a lot of us are familiar with an establishment called Church's Chicken. You see, it's one thing to go in Church's Chicken and ask, who's your pastor? <laughs> But I just want y'all to understand something. You are the church. You make the church work, not the building that's constructed on a street corner or wherever it is. You are a spiritual brick. Let me say that again. You are a spiritual brick that builds the building that God's bride, his church, is a part of. See, a lot of people think, the church is a place you go and get dressed up to arrive at and sit down for two hours and leave. That's not what this is about. That's just a place of worship and fellowship. And I told you over and over that when you go to church, that's a rehearsal practice. So when you get there on the other side of glory, that's just, you're just practicing everybody getting together. But a lot of us have a hard time getting to the rehearsal. See, it's one thing to go to choir rehearsal, baseball rehearsal, basketball practice and all that. But when you come to God's house, this is a rehearsal of when you get together with all the believers for eternal life. I hope that was able to help somebody why it's so important why you be there. It's only 52 of them in a year. Is that hard to do? Some of us all over the place during a week. But God sits one day aside and just say, can you come honor me for an hour? I mean, look at this. God is kind of like saying to himself, like, I allowed you to get up all week long. I watched you travel up and down the holly with, your, with my traveling grace. I woke you up. I give you a job. I watched over your children. I provided food, raiment, clothing, and everything you needed. But can you just say hello to me for an hour? We can't do it. Why is that so difficult? I understand some people may work. I got that. But that's your reasonable service he's saying here. And you know what? I got a theme verse for you that goes with this lesson that we're going to be looking over for the next weeks. So again, the title of this lesson is called What's Up Church? So this passage is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. So it goes a little something like this. I'm reading in a basic English version, by the way. It says, now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. That is so amazing. You see how so much is packed into that one little verse? It's a beautiful verse. Paul is telling the church of Corinthians that, now you are the body of Christ. Yes. Who? Me? I am? Yes, you. And each one of you is a part of what? The body of Christ. The body of Christ is called the church. The building you go to is not 
the church that this text Paul is talking about. Understand? Yes. So when we look at this introduction here, you see the word church tends to have a very specific image attached to it. Well, what do you mean when you say image attached to the word church? Watch this. You see, a mid-sized building with a tall steeple, usually with the cross perched at the top of it, some of them with the sign in front with some sort of cheesy message spelled out in plastic letters. I understand people want to throw some stuff up there. I got it. Hey, but watch this. As a kid, I can remember being told what I was and wasn't allowed to do in God's house. Y'all remember some of y'all used to sit on that pew? Y'all acting up, acting a fool, and all that grandmother, your mother used to do is turn around. See, it was a reason why your mother and grandmother didn't have you on the same pool with them. See, they wanted to get their praise on, but they knew y'all are subtle to be acting a fool, so they put y'all on the pew behind. Now, why did they put you on the pew behind? What about the people behind y'all? Oh, y'all forgot about that. But it was just a look that that church mother or your mother would just turn around and didn't have to say a word. It was called The Look. <laughs> oh, but y'all know today's children, that mother turn around with that look, the children will give them the look back. And might, the parent might get frightened. See, you don't know what you're dealing with with this generation. So again, when we talk about how it used to be, what you could and couldn't do in God's house. Well, as if God lives somewhere, watch this in those four brick walls and would be irritated if I brought my little truck or played with it in the house. Well, what I'm trying to get you to see is, as a child, a child might think God lives in this building. <laughs> oh, definitely not. The true and living God, the Jehovah El Yon, the Most High God, does not deal and live inside this building here. I mean, I don't want to get specific when we talk about buildings. I mean, boy, some people, some of these churches look so elaborate. They look like stadiums where certain sports play. God is still not in there either. He shows up when we show up because he said, well, if two or three are gathered, touching the green, I will be in the midst. Now watch this. Maybe you've rejected the traditional church image, opting instead for a gathering at a storefront or local coffee shop. That's all good. See, you are the church, not this building. See, this class is going to help us understand who is, what is, and how the church works. So if you want to learn more about what you fit up understand about this building, and who the true and living God is and how church really works. See, a lot of us have been churched to death. I right, let me say that again. Let me woo, let me say this again. See, so many of us have been churched to death, not realizing you are the church. Don't frustrate yourself about this thing. It's very simple. But even without the steeple, a sign, many of us still think of church as a place we go. Of course, having a fixed location is not a bad thing. Whether your church meets in a traditional church building, a house, a mall, coffee shop, bar, old factory, or wherever else, your location is a wonderful way to reach out to your community. Understand? And none of our meeting places are superior to another. Let me say that again, because somebody may say, well, our church holds and seats 10,000 people. Okay, my question would be to you then, how many disciples you got in there? Oh, okay. Um, you got 10,000 members, but I need to understand how many disciples you got in there. I would rather have five disciples than... 50,000 church members. Oh, I don't know if y'all understand what I just said there. 
You see, Jesus didn't have a 12,000 seat arena. He just chose 12 men. How about that? Isn't that something? Jesus just handpicked 12 men and watch this. One of them was a devil. Oh, he didn't leave Judas out. He was born for that moment. Isn't that something? He let him tag along. He let him come to church. He let him even hold the money. What? Judas held the money. Did y'all know that? <laughs> the one who betrayed him gave him a kiss. What a symbol sign to betray the son of man with a kiss. Isn't that something? So that's why I said it doesn't matter what the size of your building is. You need to reach out to that community. And none of our meeting places are superior to nothing. There are so many passions and demographics that sometimes we get caught up in the superiority of our preferences. Yeah, that is an easy way, what? To divide us. And that is never good. See, sometimes when we get caught up in the superiority of our preferences, that is the establishment to divide. Yeah, when you want to have certain people doing these things. You want to have certain people doing those things. God has called all of us to do something. And that's why I wanted to go over a lot of this stuff before we even talked about this lesson tonight. Well, what's going on here? Did you know the early church folks would have been confused at this sentence that I'm about to say to you right now? When I say the early church, do y'all know who I'm talking about when I say the early church? Who is the early church when I say that? Christians and Acts. The book of Acts. So watch this. The church folk in the book of Acts would be confused at this sentence. Let's go to church. They're going to be like, what? What do you mean let's go to church? They understood themselves to be the church. When you invite somebody to God's house, it might make a little better difference if you was to say something like this. Would you like to come worship with me at a place where God dwells? <laughs> you notice I didn't say nothing about the building because the first thing they go say is, I don't have nothing to wear. Y'all remember, there are some people who think a department store like Macy's has a section called church clothes. <laughs> what? You mean to tell me I can waltz myself into uh, Macy's? I can waltz myself into any department store and say, excuse me, ma'am, can you direct me to the department where your church clothes are? <laughs> See, a lot of times people will say stuff not realizing you can already see the intent that you're trying to avoid coming because so many people have told you that I can't come in there if I'm looking like this or am I wearing something. God does not care. He has never cared of the exterior of you. He's more concerned about the interior who you are. God does not look at the outer appearance of man. Man does that. Y'all know. If anybody gave you the elevator look today, anybody looked you up and down and thought you wasn't in compliance, well, we need to understand when you come to God's house, you should be able to come as you are. And that's one of the things that we emphasize at One Way Assembly. We don't want you to feel like you're unwelcome if you come in your sweatsuit. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable if you have your jeans. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable. See, it's enough going on out there where people have been told you can't go to God's house, not unless you're dressed up. Well, some of the most amazing people that run this world do the most damage and devilment wearing suits. How about that? See, just because you dressed up, we got a lot of folk in Washington, D.C. dressed up, too. We got a lot of people that's dressed up doing a lot of wrong out here. 
So don't think it's about what you wear. God is concerned about your heart. So you need to bring your heart to Christ and let him come on in. So as I said again, the early church would have been confused with that sentence saying, let us go to church because they understood they was the church. It wasn't a building or a tent. It was them. You and I make up the spiritual building church. Today, as you travel to your church on Sunday morning, it's easy to lose sight of the reality that you're not just going to church, you are the church. So next time you're on your way, understand you are it. You just bring in your brick, which is yourself, to assemble with the other bricks to form a spiritual building. Because Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing, I will be in the midst. See, it's not about quantity. It's about quality worship. Understand? You can have church with just three people. And if you got 40 or 50 people in there that don't know Jesus, it's just a full room with no one in there. Y'all remember when Mary and Joseph tried to get room in the inn? The inn supposed to have room in there. It was filled, but guess who was on the outside? Jesus. He needed somewhere to be birthed. But let's look at it this way. You got a lot of churches just like that in. Too many people in there, but Jesus not in there. See, just because you're in a place where it's crowded, you in a church because it's crowded, if Jesus in there is not in there, what you got? What's the difference between your party and a church with no Jesus in it? The same as a club. If Jesus ain't in there, what's happening here? Jesus must be in the house. Guess who brings him to the house? You supposed to bring him because he's supposed to be in you. Don't expect Jesus to just be in this place. You have to bring him in you to understand how this thing works. He said, greater is me than he that you is in the world. You make this what it is because he's inside of you. Now, you are the church. Really, you are. The place we meet shouldn't matter. Uh-oh. You are the church. So it really doesn't matter where we meet at then. It just so happened we have a location. Remember that. You see, it's about him being in you. So it shouldn't matter where we go. He's supposed to be in you. Embracing church as a place causes several problems. Would you like to know what are some of the problems we encounter when we think the church is the place to be? Well, let's look at this for size. Church and therefore Christianity gets compartmentalized when we see it as a place. Uh-oh, what do you mean by that? We tend to compartmentalize our lives also, and this has a lot to do with location. Watch this. We go to work or school and show off our professionalism. Put together sales. We go home and relax with our families. This mindset often transfers over to our lives as Christians too. We look at Sunday as the totality of the church experience. Oh, so you mean to tell me you go wait to praise him next Sunday? You see, you can easily get so compartmentalized because you thinking the church is a place where you go on Sunday. But you need to understand you are the church. So you can start praising him right now whenever he does something for you. Amen. See how you you see how quick you can get so compartmentalized thinking I'm going to wait and do something on Sunday. You don't know if you're going to make it to see Sunday. Why is it that God blesses you in the morning to wake up, 
whatever time you wake up, but you're not at church. <laughs> you're not at the building when you get up. He did that while you in the sanction of your own home. You see, we need to understand, don't get the church building so compartmentalized that you think everything else is compartmentalized as well. When we see church as a building or a place, our relationship with God tends to be something that only really takes place in a particular location. <laughs> it's easy to follow Christ in a place where everyone around you thinks you should follow Christ. Well, I'm not going to get to meddling with y'all because a lot of us tend to act very nice and polite at church. <laughs> but oh, once you cross the thresholds of the church, you might get as far as the parking lot and acting a fool. Oh, see, you didn't got so understood that I'm going to go to this place and change. It's kind of like you're walking one way outside. And when you cross the threshold in the building, it gets attention all of a sudden. Y'all know you might have this nice holy walk as you go to your chair or seat, but then you don't walk the same way at the house. <laughs> See, this is about being you at all times because you are the church. Don't get it twisted. We are to be Christ-like minded at all times. So don't spread it on thin like PB and J when you get there. Amen. See, a lot of us like to spread it on thick mm -hmm. when we get there at 11. We like to spread our walk. We like to spread our talk very well. But oh, when you get home, you got jelly all on the counter, peanut butter. I mean, hey. Oh, you want to make your sandwich look really nice at church. But when you get home, uh, sloppy Joe's all over the place. They ain't even cleaned up. <laughs> I'm trying to show y'all the comparison of compartmentalizing the church. You are it. Don't quit tripping off this building. You're supposed to understand that. That's why this class is going to be very good for us to understand does anyone know what the title of this class is? What's the name of this class? What's up, church? What's up, church? Well, guess what? The problem is the up has to do with the rapture. That's on Thursday night. I'm just trying to, when it say, what's up, church? Y'all didn't even know the up meant you need to be ready to go. <laughs> See, y'all probably thought I was just talking some slang, like, what's up, church? Or what's up, Doc? No, this is not Looney Tunes tonight. You need to understand the church is going up. <laughs> and you need to be ready to go when God tells his son to bring your bride up here, to bring the, the, the church up here. Man, look at this. <laughs> Did y'all think the church building is leaving? I've been trying to show y'all on Thursday how this thing works. The little pictures and film clips I show where the actual person is removed in rapture. Understand? That building, or that, watch this. All these building funds, that's staying here. Are you going? Are you leaving? Are you ready? All that stuff get left. In other words, we need to use what we got. Understand? Now watch this. This mindset that we're going to have to get out of very quickly because it's easy to follow Christ, as I said again, in a place where everyone around you wants to be nice. Hello, how you doing? Do you talk like that at home? Do you talk like that on the phone? See, we didn't got so holy in the building, but we're not wholly out here. Watch this. But obviously, being the church should transcend the building and day. You see that? You have the hope that so many in this world need. If your faith exclusively exists in a building or around other Christians, 
you miss the point of the very faith you represent. If you think your faith needs to be activated when you get around uh, Brother Ray Ray now, in other words, you want to get all juice when sister so-and-so get y'all sitting on the same pew or y'all you need each other to ex it rub like two flint rocks to get a spark. Uh-uh. You gonna you you got obviously much more work to do. That's not how that works. But you know what's so good about God in these classes on tonight? Does anyone know what four plus four is? Eight. Four plus four is eight, and it's eight o'clock. In our class, we've just made it through our first little section. So let's give God Amen. some praise. Tonight we made it. Amen. Well, so the key to this is for you to invite somebody back next week, and I will have this lesson that we began tonight on YouTube a little later. And that's the beautiful thing, understanding what's up, church, because we didn't got so caught up thinking I need to get to the building, but I am the church. And let me put this disclaimer out there before anyone uh, gets a little um, misunderstood. Just because you are the church don't mean you get to stay home. <laughs> ah, that was the catch-22. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves, especially in these days, in the last days, as these things are coming to end, God wants us to get together to build each other up, to help one another. We're all in this together. Teamwork, make the dream work. Amen. God did not create any solo singers out there. I know sometimes we'll ask somebody to render a solo. A lot of us think we're just like the Lone Ranger. But let me share something with you. As long as I've been living, the way the Lone Ranger show works, the show was named after him, The Lone Ranger. But why is it that no episode went off without Tonto helping him? You see, a lot of us don't understand. You might try to be me, myself, and I and get this thing done a lot, but you got to understand my help cometh from the Lord and his Holy Spirit is the one that helps me. See, it may look like I'm doing this by myself, but there's someone greater in me that's doing something that I can't even do on my own. And I'm glad I'm helpless. I'm glad I need his help because sometimes I get weak, but I love being weak because hes that's when he's much stronger in me when I'm in my weakness. When you're strong, you operating in self. But I love when Paul says, for me to die is Christ to gain. So I love gaining, dying daily to this whole understanding. Whoa, let's see. God is so good. We made it tonight. Um, any questions or comments before I give you your word for the week tonight? Woo, we. I good, just got good, good evening. Yes. Hi, uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, the, uh, putting up with my our interruptions, but we're glad that we were able to join and you will be seeing us more often. This oh, is Erica are. and Jason. Hey, well, we welcome you tonight and we glad you're here. Always remember, God's ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. So even though you may have arrived at the time you did, see, God says the first shall be last hmm. and the last shall be first. So you was the first one here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Amen to that. Because God wanted you to get what he needed you to have. Yeah. You see, so it's not about being on time because God don't deal with time. So we glad you're here. He wanted you to have what he saw fit for you to have. He already coordinated your whole day <laughs> that you knew you were going to get in at the time he wanted you here. You couldn't have yeah. got here any earlier that he wanted. That lets you know he's in control. You see, Amen. That's the beautiful thing. We glad to be have him in control because Janet Jackson <laughs> is talking about control, but I don't want that kind she talking about. I need right. the Holy Ghost to control me. In the right. beautiful part in Psalms it says, "For a righteous man's steps are perfectly ordered by the Lord." So your steps was ordered today to be here at that appointed time. Amen. Amen. So you're Amen. all right. You're perfect. So. At Thank this you. moment, you're welcome. I'm going to give you guys your word for the week. And this I, is. I would like to say, I would like.
it was wait 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 hold it let me get the word for the week out real quick um and then you can come right back i just want to get this out real quick the word for the week tonight is when you're happy you enjoy the music but when you're sad you understand the lyrics ah that's a good one ah uh, let me repeat that for you see the word for the week even though we went over a lesson this is like a little magnet i'm gonna put on your refrigerator or i'm gonna put something in your little inside pocket to hold you throughout the week regardless of what the lesson was but tonight's word for the week is when you are happy you enjoy that music but when you sad you understand those lyrics mm -hmm. yes that's good all okay. right okay uh any questions or comments real quick my my comment blessed lesson and teaching us to learn the true meaning of the church we are the church the body of christ thank you amen thank you so much um any other questions or comments before we close in prayer tonight enjoy the teaching you're so welcome thank you all so much can't get it done without you guys thank you for letting us know that he's still in charge i was late getting on oh you was right on time <laughs> you're the problems but i made it <laughs> It sounds like a lot of us was late today. Well, guess what? Y'all was the first ones here. <laughs> Thank you. See, God does things so differently, and it's, it, it enlightens us to understand that he wanted you to be in at what time he saw fit, because there was other things going on, but we are here from 8, from 7 to 8. And no matter what time you get in, it's going to be exactly what he wants you to have for you. Amen. So Amen. to God be the glory. Each and every one of you tonight. I'm just so excited what God is doing. And you guys already know tomorrow we are still dealing with the subject matter called what? The rapture. The rapture. All right. The rapture. Not talking about the song that Anita Baker was talking about. Not that one. We're talking about the rapture, God's redemption program for his body of Christ. So we say, what's up, church? Well, the church is the next thing to go up. And that's why we have to make sure you get your life right so you will not be left. And that's why you need to be ready instead of getting ready. Got that? It's best to be at the bus stop than on your way to the bus stop and miss the bus. Amen. 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 All right. So I'm going to give you guys a closing prayer. And next week we will continue with our new lesson. What's up, church? Amen. Uh, let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for what you, our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard on tonight. We give you all the praise, power, glory that you deserve. We thank you so much because we can't do anything without you. Lord, we thank you for every Zoom listener, viewer, and caller that's present tonight with us. And we call on your name, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us. We call on your name, Jehovah Tisikanu, is the Lord of our righteousness. We call on your name, Jehovah Shalom, for you're the Lord of peace. And we thank you so much for giving us a peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, we call on your name, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us to protect us from hurt, harm, and danger. And if there's anyone on this call that is dealing with any type of infirmities, sicknesses, uh, pains, any type of sufferings, temperatures, Lord, we ask that you rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort everyone on this call. We thank you for anyone who first timers tonight, that you will bless them. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which is the one who does reveal the word to us, shows us the word, plants it as a seed in our heart, which is the soil, that it may bring forth some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. We praise you to the utmost, and we call in your name Jehovah Nisi, who is our victory banner and our standard. And Lord, we send you ahead of us before we arrive for tomorrow's lesson. 
We thank you and we praise you so much. We ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. We pray, amen. 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 So you guys, to God be the glory. Thank you so much. I'm glad I was able to start the recorder for our new lesson. <laughs> so we got that hey. done. Have a good night. All right. Good night.